The first experiment of this kind was carried out in our country at Efalan R together with Swiss chemists. When placing plutonium here and irradiating it with a beam, the recoil nuclei will stop here in this box, which is filled with helium. With the help of a capillary, we will remove this helium along with the nuclei that formed there and pass them through a system of detectors with a size of one centimeter by one centimeter on either side. The distance between the detectors is one millimeter, and there are 32 of these detectors. Different temperatures are set along the detectors, from room temperature, perhaps slightly higher, to liquid nitrogen temperature, which is minus 190 degrees Celsius. Helium moves through this corridor quickly enough, and it is possible to set the speed of movement at about 5 meters per second. The super-heavy elements live a long time, and therefore you can transport the resulting mixture to this neighboring room, where observation equipment is located. But what are we looking for? Chemists suggested observing element 112. Element 112 according to periodic law, is a homologue of mercury. It should behave like mercury if there is no relativistic effect. And how does mercury behave? In addition to being a liquid at room temperature, mercury forms a compound when it comes into contact with gold. This compound, which has been known for a long time, is called an amalgam, and forms when gold and mercury adhere to each other at a chemical level. That is, two atoms each contribute a bimetallic molecule, one gold atom and one mercury atom. The bond is not very strong because, as soon as this compound is heated to a temperature of 140 degrees Celsius, they diverge. If you remember that one electron volt is 104 degrees, then the strength of the bond that is created here is measured in milli-electron volts. Nevertheless, this bond is clearly visible, and in the past, the domes of cathedrals were covered with a combination of gold and mercury. For this purpose, mercury was taken and gold leaf was melted into it. But will element 112 also produce an amalgam? Will it also combine with gold the way mercury does? Or is it neutral and therefore will not connect? Or will it behave like radon, which is a noble gas and which passes through the system to the end without reacting with the walls of the detector and stops only where the low temperature equals the temperature of its condensation? The walls are made as follows. One wall of the detector is covered with gold, and the other is not. Let's put radon, mercury and element 112 inside simultaneously. This means that we must know how mercury behaves, and this can always be demonstrated by taking an atom of mercury, sending it through the system and observing how all the atoms of mercury adhere to the walls of the first detectors. As soon as a mercury atom hits the surface of gold, it instantly sticks to the gold. Indeed, the experiment showed that practically all the mercury is deposited in the first two detectors. On the contrary, radon does not react. It passes, as I said, through all detectors and condenses here. Then the question remains, where will the 112th element come to a stop? Where mercury comes to a stop? Or will it follow the radon gas? This is a diagram of how it happened. The gas used was helium argon, and it carried mercury and radon. This is the temperature gradient. This is experimental data. Mercury adhered to the walls of the first detectors, 
whereas radon landed here in the farthest detectors. The five events of element 112 were spread out like this. It is very interesting that all of them took place on the left side of the diagram, where Mercury was, but they clearly do not repeat the profile of Mercury. In what sense do they not repeat the pattern? There are three different atoms. Radon, Mercury and element 112. And there is a surface that is not covered with gold, but rather another element, such as quartz. The temperature ranges from plus 100 degrees Celsius to minus 100 degrees Celsius. We send the atoms along the detector, as well as this temperature gradient, and we see the following. If radon moved to the lowest temperature, and if mercury also moved to a low temperature because it does not react with quartz, then element 112 must stop between them. However, if the surface is not made of quartz but of gold, then radon will still follow the same path, and mercury will stop at 104 degrees Celsius. This is where it adheres to gold. According to the calculations that Valeria Pershina did in 2006, the 112th element would stop here. And this demonstrates the relativistic effect, the difference between the black column and the red column. But the experimental results are a little higher than Pershina predicted. Thus, the relativistic effect was observed for the first time in a super-heavy nucleus. This is perhaps not something special, since it had to some extent been expected, but there was something else that was very interesting. When we know the distribution of atoms along the surface of gold, we can find the heat of absorption. And from the heat of absorption, we can calculate the heat of sublimation. From the heat of sublimation, which looks like this column and falls in the twelfth period of the periodic table, meaning zinc, cadmium, mercury, and element 112, the boiling point can be determined from this sublimation. The boiling point for zinc is quite high, but still not as high as for other metals. This is it for cadmium. Mercury lies here, and here for element 112. And this here is room temperature. It is possible that this is gas, meaning that it was the first time a noble metal was suspected to be in the form of a gas. These are some of the unusual properties of superheavy elements that can distinguish them from light homologues due to the relativistic effect. Now, they are working on elements 113 and then 114. All of these elements have sufficiently long half-lives to allow either similar or other experiments. I talk about this in as much detail as I talk about fission, because these two concepts will drastically develop when the factory of super-heavy elements starts working. When the results increase by a factor of 100, then it will be a very broad study indeed.